All right, hello everyone. This is Hunter Doyle here from Sports Chat with the boys and Nate. I'm here with Madre Harper from Southern Illinois, cornerback. It's good. Um, so we're just going to do a little exclusive interview today, get to know him a little bit. So let's jump into it. So, so Madre, you played at Southern Illinois, all MVFC honorable mention. Really good conference too. So very impressive. Uh, you had seven. You were seventeenth in the nation in pass breakups last year too. So. Really, I'm really impressed by your film and your measurables and, and everything you showed. So tell, tell us a little bit about yourself, like how you got into football, your journey. I know I know you have some relatives who are involved with football, too. So just give mm -hmm. us a little background. Uh, I mean, basically, I grew up playing football my whole life since I was five years old. So it's kind of been something that I've always done. I mean, I was a kid that, you know, instead of like playing, you know, video games on the weekends, I was running hills, working out like every weekend I ran track. I played basketball. I mean, I did all sports. It was just like, that's what we were doing on the weekend. I was always training, going to camps, like training with my trainer. So like, I've been training for a long time. This is like a long time coming. And so obviously, you know, I was fortunate enough to go to a, you know, a nice high school. We were able to get recruited out of there. They were able to get, you know, some big time offers and, you know, go to Oklahoma State and things didn't work out. But I mean, that's, you know, that's part of life, part of football. And I ended up transferring to Southern Illinois. So that's kind of like how I got to where I, you know, am now. Yeah, definitely. So, so kind of tell us a little about that that transfer and kind of like what went into deciding on Southern Illinois and all the factors that were presented and kind of just like how you grew as a player through that. Um, basically, yeah, it was a tough thing because obviously nobody wants to you know be dismissed from the team or anything like that. I know people can read up on that. And I mean, obviously, I didn't break any rules or anything. Just some internal things we want to speak on. But obviously, yeah, it was kind of hard because going from a power five to a smaller school is a little difficult, especially like, you know, I feel like I'm a good player and I feel like I should be at a power five school. And, you know, obviously, we're going to lose a couple of things, you know, kind of like, you know, like the big fan base and stuff like that. Even though that doesn't make you a football player, but I mean, it's definitely who doesn't want to play in front of 70,000 people. So, yeah, and then going to Southern Illinois, my best friend out of high school, he actually went to Southern Illinois out of high school. And then I know the rule where if you go drop a conference, you don't have to sit out a year. So that was kind of like the deciding factor of, like, why I went there. And obviously, him being there made me more comfortable and so stuff like that. But, yeah, I mean, it wasn't a hard decision because, you know, football is football. But obviously, you know, I'm missing a little things, you know, especially the, the, the bond I built with those group of guys that I went into, you know, school with. But overall, I had a great experience. I met a lot of great dudes. So it was a good time. It's awesome. That's, that's good to hear. So, so you guys had a really nice DB room last year. Um, Jeremy Chen obviously is expected to go pretty high too. And mm -hmm. uh, was it Coach Rogers was your coach? Yeah. Um, so just kind of walk us through like your guys' preparation each week and like what ha like what made you guys bond together and really be able to just excel and kind of be ball hawks out there and just play like dogs. I mean, one, it's kind of just in us. Like, everybody don't have that dog mentality, you feel me? So, like, that's just kind of, like, how we grew up, kind of, like, who we are as, you know, as, as persons, as athletes, and just, like, you know, in general. And then preparation, I mean, watch a lot of film, did a lot of study. And I'm a big advocate. You need to study your opponent. You need to know what's going on. And not only your opponent, but your own defense. So, like, took pride in knowing what's going on in our defense week to week, staying locked in at all times, and just doing stuff like that. That allowed us to play at a high level because we know what's going on. We know what to expect. And we know what our opponent's going to do. And obviously just practicing hard. I'm a big practice player. I'm a big – people call, like, practice heroes. Well, you would consider that. That would be me. And I'm a starter. So – and I'm a practice hero. Like, I like to practice hard. I feel like you got to – you need to have that intensity. and You need to keep yourself in shape. And you need to do things like that to prepare yourself for the game. Definitely, yeah. Good stuff, man. So, so going off of that, talk to us a little bit, like, about your play style. So, you know, you got your – you got different styles of corner. Um, you got nickel corners. Sometimes you got – you got your guys on the outside are real big, even some some guys who are even 5'9". So tell us about your play style. I know you ran a really good 40, and, and you got a lot of size. So so tell us a little more yeah. about that. Uh, I'm a press man corner, lockdown corner for real, for real. I mean, like physical, get in your face, and I'm going to tackle, and I'm going to throw this weight around, and I'm going to hit you, and I'm going to make plays. And that's kind of like how I like to play. But I also like to be technically sound because I feel like when you're technical at the start of the route, you have a better chance of ending that, you know, winning at the end of the route. And, like, I like to play aggressive. I like to play physical. And I feel like, you know, as a corner, especially with my size and length, that needs to be something that I can do. And I can play zone coverage, but I feel like my main strengths are press and, like, getting hands on and not allow, you know, my arm length, not allowing that receiver to have a free release. That's kind of like I feel like I get my, you know, most money out of that. But, I mean, same time, being a well-rounded corner is important to me and playing both sides of the ball. I play left to right. doesn't matter. Boundary, field, that, that stuff doesn't matter. 
And yes, yeah, so that's kind of how I feel like see myself. It's kind of like, you know, like a James Ramsey. I'm like a faster Richard Sherman, you know, like technically like, te- like Stefan Gilmore. It's kind of dudes like I yeah. look up to and like the pattern my game after. Definitely. Yeah. So, so you kind of have that, like, you're not going to get past me style. Like I'm, I'm better than Every, you and everything. So, everything. So what's, team kind of, matter. <laughs> so what's kind of like that thing that, that makes you tick, like that everyone kind of has like a drive that motivates them, whether it's like, I don't know, sometimes it's like a role model who passed away or like, it can be anything. So what's, what's that thing that makes, that just drives you every play, every, every play practice, every game? I mean, just one, like, I like to be the best. Like, I want to be the best, and I want to be dominant. And that's always been me. I've always been, like, an alpha male, alpha dog. I always want to be the best, do the best. I want to work the hardest. I want to beat you down and everything. And I love football because I'm able to dominate another man without getting in trouble. I can go out there and dominate him where I want him to know that I'm better than you. I'm going to outwork you, out-physical you, and I won't get tired before you get tired. Even when you think I'm tired, I'm not tired. So, like, and then obviously my family being that, you know, sacrifices that they made for me to play this game, you know, obviously sticking with me this whole entire journey, obviously be big for them, you know, obviously, because, you know, the league can change people's lives and I'm hoping to, you know, change my family's life, just, you know, lessen the burden on them, whether it's bills or a car, you know, whatever, you know, my family needs, my parents need. Definitely. Yeah. So, so you talked about transferring already um, and kind of some adversity you faced there. Mm-hmm. Do you have any other, like, any big moments of adversity that you faced, like, whether it was high school or even at Southern Illinois, whether it was, like, even just not even off the field, just, like, in-game, you just had to, like, overcome. This guy's beating me. I got I to gotta figure out how to stop him. Like, what are, talk about some of the, your, like, biggest moments of adversity and how you overcame that. Well, my biggest moment, because, like, I've never had a losing season until I got to Southern Illinois. So, like, mm-hmm. we had that first year. I'm mean, not sure you know a little research. We went, like, four and nine, two and nine, that, yeah. two and nine that first year. That was my first ever losing season in my whole entire football career. So that was different for me. And seeing that type of dynamic in the locker room and, like, you know, you going out there going 100 miles. Like, I was playing, like, 112 snaps a game. Mm-hmm. So, like, playing that many snaps and putting your heart on the line and, you know, still not coming out with the outcome that you want, that was kind of, like, difficult for me. Because obviously, like, I want to win, and it's not – I mean, I could have no plays, but if we win, we had a good day. Mm-hmm. If I get 12 – you know, if I get 12 tackles and three picks and we lose, you know, it just doesn't feel the same. So, to me, that was kind of just going through that and then seeing how we grew as a team from that next year, you know, coming to 7-5 and five and improving our record, you know, getting ourselves on the radar. Because it's bigger than us. Because I feel like us playing well with the – senior. I mean, like us, I mean, like the seniors, you know, us putting the, the, the tracks down for the younger guys so they know the standard – and how things are supposed to be done. And obviously, you know, me, Chen, Nigel, DJ, everybody going to the league, that helps our younger dudes get more publicity and get more, you know, so they can achieve their dreams. So I feel like it's not just, you know, for me, it's for them too. Because with me, they, other corners in the room, there's a lot of young dudes in there, they have the same dreams as I can do. You can make it. I came from a big school, yeah, but that don't mean you can't make it out of there because I'm making it out and Chen's making it out. So why can't you go there and do the same thing? If you put work in, you know, you make the plays. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Um... Yeah, kind of going off of that with, I mean, you got a lot of you guys like transferred from from Oklahoma States or like even just came from high schools where like you guys are the big recruits. So you're just used to winning every every time out there, like playing all these like. I'm from Texas, Texas, so you know, that's that's what we do down here. Yeah, exactly. Big part of that culture. So so talk to us. You were talking a little bit about like that locker room chemistry with you and the senior seniors. So talk to us a little bit about like how that how that was important in your football journey even before Southern Illinois and especially like last year at Southern Illinois where you guys were able to like even like hang with North Dakota State who's one of the highly regarded um, organizations and in, in, in FCS program and just have a really good season in that conference. Right. Well, I mean, one, I've always been a hungry individual. Like I said, I always want to be the best. And like I'm a top prospect. I'm a top player. I feel like I'm a top 10 DB in the class. Other people may not feel that way just because I didn't finish out of the biggest school because I feel like – if I so-called finish out of a bigger school, they'd be rejecting me to go first, second round. Just because my stats and my measurables are the same, if not better. I just went to a FCS school. So to me, playing teams like that, we always felt like we were just as good as anybody else. No, it didn't matter who we played. Even when we played Ole Miss that year, we really should have beat Ole Miss. We just kind of ran out of gas a little bit. But I mean, whoever we played didn't really matter. Why are you barking? <laughs> that. I think he wants to go outside. Here, hold on. <laughs> But no, you're good. Yeah, I mean, just having that mentality in the locker room that you know we can stick with anybody, we can play with anybody. And I feel like that first year I got there, there's a lot of like uncertainty with leaders. 
you know, who's mm -hmm. going to be that that person to step up and make a play. It had to be so much more of I'm not going to be that person to step up and play. I'm going to be that person to step up and not just waiting for somebody to step up. So I feel like everybody yeah. felt more confident and just I can be that player to make a play. It doesn't have to be me. It doesn't have to be Chin. It can be me, you know, and it doesn't have to be a big time play. It can be special teams. It can be, you know, a tackle on, special, on a punt and pinning somebody inside the 10, that can change mm -hmm. the whole dynamic of the game. So I yep. feel like I've seen yeah, people are understanding that more, their roles, and just kind of like doing their jobs. Yeah, for sure. So, so you mentioned Ole Miss there for a second, and obviously you played Oklahoma State again. So, so talk to us about like home. Yeah, it was like nothing to me. It was like home. I mean, I'm used to that. That's what yeah. I want to be. That's what I, that's my that's my that's my PB and J. So like, yeah, it felt good to be back in the atmosphere and yeah. back in that big time. Because I mean, I feel like I'm a big time player, regardless of the school. I'm a big, I'm a power five player. I mean, everybody yeah. knows that. You, you obviously can tell my measure, but I'm a power five player. I mean, obviously yeah. they were at LSU, but so what? I just have to make it work. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so going off of that with all the power five, uh, all the power five talk, who was, who was the top receiver or like toughest opponent you ever went up against over your time in college? Or even it could be someone from high school who made it big. Uh, it had to be DK Metcalf or James Washington. Cause James, James, James going to get James in practice really prepared me for somebody like him. Yeah. Like James is nice. I mean, at Steelers, James is a real humble dude. James, my dog, you know, real country boy. He's nice. And DK was nice too. Big physical receiver, but I feel like I held my own, you know, so I mean, I feel like that prepared me to, you know, be in this type of love. And obviously, yeah, I didn't go against, you know, the, the what they say, like the power, you know, the power five receivers, he's going to be an FCS, but at the same time, it's still different for me. I was coming to St. Louis in high school. I covered him in Oklahoma State going against, like, Marshall Aitman. He plays for the Raiders. Yeah. Uh, Steve Lacey plays for Detroit Lions. So, it wasn't mm -hmm. like I wasn't covering big-time people. So, to me, it's all the same. And I can't wait to, just, you know, just get on anybody's team and, you know, show the skill a lot. But I feel like they're going to get a steal, honestly. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Big fan here. Um, yeah. I mean, even though these, these FCF guys don't consistently go up every Sunday, I mean, you guys are still are still tested every year, and a lot of you guys come from from high schools or different programs. Who, right. I mean, you have faced top guys before. It's not like, and like you said, you have the measurables, you have everything they want. It's just you went to a smaller school, but, but right. yeah. So, so talking about Southern Illinois, what's your what's your biggest takeaway um, from your like your time there, like your legacy? Like, what's what are you gonna remember most? Like that period of growth or a certain game or. Um, just like the bond with the seniors, what what is it that that you'll really take away? Mm -hmm. uh, really, my period of growth, because obviously I had to grow as a player and grow as a person. Because obviously, you know, leaving Oklahoma State, you know, I was young. I was 17, 18, leaving kind of young. So I didn't really get to, like, get the whole experience of being at a Power Five. But just growing as a person, as an athlete, seeing how I matured and how, you know, I take approach to the game and how, you know, you just react to certain things, how you move how you train, because I've always trained hard, but you know, maybe I need to train a little different. I need to do this, I need to do that. And just taking more aspect of the game. And obviously, like you said, those bond with those type of dudes and just being in that, that region. I've never been to Illinois. I, you know, I'm from Texas, I don't even see snow. So <laughs> being able to see things, you know, being able to see things like that and be, and, you know, go visit Chicago and visit St. Louis. You know, I'm not saying I'd never go back, but I would have never been able to see things like that and meet people from that area without going to that school. So I'm really thankful for that and really blessed for that. Definitely, yeah. I. I go to college in, in Illinois around Chicago and the, the snow is, that's not my forte. I, I can, I can do without it. it for me, but hey, I can play it at those any teams watching. I can play in anything. But yeah. I mean, it's whatever. It needs a mindset. I got over it quick, but obviously, you know, being, I'm a Texas boy, it was cold. It, it yeah. just took time. I mean, like me on the field when it's cold, I don't be thinking about nothing. And I wore no sleeves anyway, because I want my opponent to know that this cold is not phasing me. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I didn't wear sleeves anyway. I didn't care. And I'm I from gotcha. Texas, so I can do it. Make anybody, you know, I'm used to practicing in high school. We practice it when it's 100 degrees outside. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's what I'm used to. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I got you. So moving on, moving on to the draft. What's been, obviously there's been, I mean, we're, we're in global pandemic right now. Um, but I mean, the draft challenge or the draft process is challenging enough anyway. So, right. so what's been this year specifically, obviously, what's been the most challenging part of this whole process? Um, I have to say not getting the opportunity to do private workouts. I feel like with my numbers, they obviously opened up a lot of eyes. A lot of people didn't really know who I was. Just being where, you know, you probably see some of my film. It's hard to see the corners on our film. It's just That's just point blank. Yeah. It's just hard. I know you've seen it. Try to look up some stuff. It's, the angles are not that good. And then, you know, obviously, you know, 
Everybody was focused on Chin, which is that's my brother. He's gonna do great. I know he's gonna go high, but you know, a lot of people didn't know about me. So with my numbers, I knew I was gonna test well because I've always been an elite athlete. So I always knew that. But I knew I was gonna need to follow it up with private workouts. So I'm kind of bummed out that I didn't get that experience to go work out for teams and you know fly up to their facilities. You know, do all that good stuff. Have the little mm-hmm. you know how to do like 30 visits and all that good stuff. And I feel like me working out for teams would help me a little bit more. You know, obviously so they can see how I can move. Because now teams are only going to get what, you know, what you post, yep. you know, your workouts, and they're going to get what their film and only going to get what, you know, what their coaches say. So that obviously is going to not hurt, but obviously anything can help when they get to see with their own two eyes. Mm-hmm, definitely. What's the, what's the biggest thing? So we talked a lot about, like, your athletic ability and you're just mm-hmm. a ball hawk. So what's, what's the biggest thing you feel like you want to work on going into the league right now and that, and that you feel like is maybe something you could find in? Um, probably like, probably like, obviously just keep working on my technique. That's something that consistently has to happen. And obviously my technique, you know, in college, you're going to play your coach's technique. So making that transition from whatever college technique I was playing to NFL technique is something I know that I'll have to work on. Cause obviously I'm going to go against a little faster dudes, which obviously I can handle, but it's going to be a little different just because of who I was going against before. And then working on, I feel like, just the overall knowledge of the game because I do have a good football IQ but there is more that I need to know and need to learn so I can be more valuable for the team because obviously you know in college I didn't play a lot of nickel anything like that but you never know I might get to the league they may want to put me at nickel or may put me at safety so just knowing more about football that's not saying like I don't know but just you know a little, little more knowledge it couldn't hurt and in the league you gotta know everything I feel like that's that's possible to stay on the team stay more valuable so those things I feel like I can still work on and get better at yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so are you are you a 49ers fan? I heard. I like Richard Sherman. So, okay. so, so wherever he goes, I'm, I'm rocking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm rocking. So, so what would it be like to to play under him and and get to learn from him and and have that opportunity I, this year if the 49ers gave you that? And the thing, the crazy thing is, like I heard Sherman like is a great mentor to the young dudes. Like mm-hmm. being able to play underneath somebody that I've been watching since the eighth grade and been modeling my game after would just be huge like I think people would think we were twins honestly like <laughs> it, would, it would be huge like just to learn somebody like that and like we're kind of like the same like and I even got off I almost went to Stanford just because what Sherman went there and I got an offer from them so like just to play on these somebody with that type of IQ who's been in the game for a long time who knows what's going on and that 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 knowledge and how you know just even not even step outside of football how to move around the league how to operate yourself how to carry yourself in class how you know how does an NFL player act how do they move how do they handle things that type of knowledge is just you, you can't buy that at the store so like that that'd be that you know that'd be great to have a veteran corner like that yeah and, and like you were saying like some people have probably knocked you for football iq not that you don't have it it's like there's a lot to it and richard's i mean richard's elite with his film study you watch videos right. of him everywhere like breaking down film with the best analysts he's he's right. absolutely nuts so he's a he's, he's a that's what, that's what i try that's what i try to do the same thing in college like Keep just keep studying, keep you know. So I know I need to keep learning because you know in the league it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. Because look at like this, even with, with the hashes are moved in, that yeah. opens up a whole more of route trees, you know. So I need to keep you know learning, keep progressing with that. Yeah, and having having that mindset is so huge too. I think I think you have a really good mindset in the fact that like a lot of young guys come in and think like, you know, like I I played well. Like for example, like Oklahoma State, like I was I was a four year starter. I mean, I, I locked right. down opposing wide receivers I'm ready for this and then it's it's they a lot of, sh- lot of shock waves you don't hear about them in three years yeah <laughs> you don't hear about them exactly. but I mean that's how, that's, how, that's how every draft goes you're gonna get some people that's gonna get drafted higher than me and I don't have no hard feelings I just want to be I just want to play football I just want to be in the yeah. league whether I get drafted or undrafted free agent I know I'm gonna go on somebody's team and work hard and I know one I'm gonna make my money playing special teams first off because I know that that'll guarantee me a spot mm-hmm. and so you you see it every year dudes go high on the draft People say they're this, this, and that, and they get to the league, and for whatever reason, you don't hear about them in two years. You don't hear about them in three years. Whether they weren't that good, or they stopped working, like you said, or they thought they were ready, or they really weren't, you know, trying to soak in that knowledge. And, you know, I want to take advantage of every opportunity. Because think about it. In a couple of days, I'm going to have the, the greatest job, you know, on the planet to be yeah. able to just to play football and to have that lifestyle is just something that a lot of people wish they could do. And that's an elite level club, in my opinion. Just to be in the NFL is small. And to make it to college, I'm very blessed, and God has blessed me to this point, to earn a degree, blessed again, just to be considered as a prospect, 
I mean, that's just huge. So I'm really just thankful for that. Yeah, I mean, if you think about the percentage of guys from, from like going just through different points of your journey, you know, high school, like even like AAU teams or that's a more basketball thing. But like, you know, you got the point, like no, no, for sure. teams and, and then going to college, like the percentage that the fact that you're even like up there on prospect boards is just like such an accomplishment. And it, it right. sounds like you're ready to learn and, and go in and, and show a team that they they made a big a, a really good decision and a big well, decision. Definitely. Like they're they're gonna make a good decision. I promise you, whatever team takes me, they I'm gonna give them everything I got. And I feel like a lot of people will be shocked because you know, and it's also like no pressure. Being like a late round guy on draft agent, like nobody has any like expectations. I feel like some dudes kind of fall just because they are a first, second rounder. So everybody's like they have to be like this. Yeah. And some of them can't handle that. So with me being undrafted or being a free agent or whatever, you know, late round, fifth round, it's just a fifth round, you know, corner. And then next thing you know, I pop up on the scene, they're like, oh, wow, like, you know, like, okay, yeah, he's doing something. That's how I feel like it's going to be my path and my journey. And then, you know, in three years, that's when you can get your second contract. And to me, the whole goal is to get you, get to your second contract. They may make more money than me at the front, but in the back end, you'll get it back. So I'm not – the money's not really an issue to me. I'd rather have a long career, and I have goals in league that I want to accomplish. You know, I want to be all pro. I want to be on the roster. I want to make those – I want to be respected. Like, regardless of the money, if I don't get – I don't care if I get paid the highest, who cares? I want people to know, like, that's a great corner. He's somebody that can play. And that's that, to me, that's a better career than just making all the money that they're saying you poop. Yeah, for sure. I, awesome. Yeah, I love that, man. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So what teams have you have you been talking to lately, and, and what's the picture looking right, like right now? Or is that more confidential? I can't, can't release the teams. Gotcha. But the picture, I mean – I think I'm going to get drafted between rounds four through six. That's kind of like where I see myself going. Just fourth round because, you know, the talent level, my measurables, the team may be like, well, you know, let's go ahead and pull the trigger. You know, let's get them before anybody else takes them. And then fifth, sixth round is kind of like, you know, where they do draft those late round corners, you know, people that, you know, to me it's like a low risk. If he works out, great. If he doesn't, okay, no big deal. That's how I kind of where I see myself. And it looks good, but you never know, like you said, how the draft goes. Some people could drop. If, you know, other other top – DBs or corners or receivers drop that could you know knock everybody down and that yeah. you know that's how the draft go that's business and I have no problem with that yeah for sure so what's we've already like talked a lot about the type of player you are and everything but mm -hmm. just if you could tell every team one thing what it what is every team getting if they take Madre Harper this year uh, they're going to be taking somebody who loves the game of football, who has a real passion for the game. I mean, you're talking about that I've been doing this since five years old. So, like, somebody has a real passion for the game who's not going to give any problems on or off the field. And I feel like that's really big. And then somebody that they can trust bringing to the organization that's going to add to them and help the, you know, camaraderie of uplifting the organization, regardless if they're losing or winning or, you know, whatever they have in it. Because I feel like when you draft players, you're, you're looking to change sometimes, change the culture of the room, you know. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that'll be a positive influence on that, regardless of what role I have. Because I, you know, like I said, I just want to play football. I just want my foot in the door. When I get my foot in the door, I know that I'll be able to maximize the opportunities. And if I don't, that's on me. I don't want, you know, if I don't make it, I want it to be on me because I wasn't playing good enough, not on because just, you know, whatever weird stuff. All right. Yeah. Just want to thank you so much. I mean, appreciate mm -hmm. your time and for this opportunity. Um, take, I know it's busy with the draft process right now. Um, I, mean, I love this stuff. I have no problem doing this. To me, yeah. like, I don't, mind, I, don't mind, I don't mind doing interviews and stuff like that. I want to reach out to people. And I, like I said, I want to connect with people in the public. So hopefully whoever team takes me, I'll be able to connect with those fans and whoever. I like doing this stuff. So I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't turn it down for the world. Yeah, I love your mindset. I, I think, especially with you being even on the field with, like, special teams versatility, I think, I think the team's going to really, really value you from day one. Um, I really hope you come to, to my Eagles this year. I would, yeah. I would love that, but that's not in my hands. Um, so yeah. one quick. I mean, there's a lot of Eagles fans down here, so you'd be surprised. Yeah, yeah. A lot of Eagles I, fans down here. They're like it's like the Eagles, Giants, and Cowboys. Like those three just <laughs> in Texas. I so, got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah. So, so one quick question before we wrap up. This is just kind of like a get to know you question. So, you you're in the Super Bowl right now, right? And Ooh. and you yeah, you're you're starting. You're starting first. Ooh. You're starting from first snap to last every every play. <laughs> Woo! So what's what's the uh, what's the pregame song right before you go out? You're in the locker room. You need one song to go out and and get you just amped up to play. You're you're ready to go out there. Yeah, I'm about to put on "Finito" by Chief Keith. That is a staple 
and that would turn any locker room up. We've been playing that song since my freshman year in, in, in high school. So, finito by Chief Keith. That's going to get me going. That's going to get the whole locker room going. And then you know I got to say a prayer because I can't do it without God. And I feel like that combination right there, I'm ready to go. I agree. Yeah. So, thank you so much again for your time. I really, I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm excited to see where you end up Thursday. Everyone, you. keep your eye out for, for Madre in the middle rounds. He's going to be He's going to be a big steal this year. So thank you again, Madre. So thank you're going to so sign much. off now. Thank you.